Let us now examine the issue of Nigerian workers' welfare. On this occasion of a May Day, joining us to discuss this is the Deputy President of the Nigeria Labour Congress, Mr. Amechi Asubuni. Thank you for joining us on the News Eternal. Happy uh, Labour Day or Happy May Day. Congratulations <laughs> to Nigerian workers. Uh, well, uh, you. Thank you. And a big congratulations to Nigerian workers for, you know, staying the course. And now they have some sort of victory with the minimum wage. But as we were talking before, you know, we came to the discussion, how will Labour keep the government accountable so that it pays as it has promised? I think the issue of wage, as uh, it were, for us, we see it as a law. And uh, no party is giving room to negotiate law. Laws are meant to be enforceable. And as a party, Labour intends to monitor the implementation believing that no state will certainly do less than has agreed. Minimum wage for 30,000 is payable anywhere in Nigeria. I don't want us to truly bring the laziness of some governors into discourse, keeping us busy discussing their inabilities, why they shouldn't pay their responsibility. For me, it's a duty, and uh, everyone is responsible to his own duty. But is it, is it really, is it, will minimum wage really alleviate the suffering of the Nigerian worker? Is that, is that really where, you know, is, is this the only solution? No, for sure. In developed countries where you have infrastructures, people talk less of wage where you know there are provisions for water, provisions for road, schools, medical. But where these are absent, still in a developing country like ours, you cannot do without talking about wage, because these are workers that will eventually incur costs for these facilities for themselves. Nigerian workers invite infrastructure with their money. They pay rent, they pay, they pay, they, some of them reconstruct their roads. People, average Nigerian has a borehole. That is not their duty. We're talking about 30,000. So each time we, we, we discuss the value of 30,000, he re-provoke average worker because certainly there will be need to reapply for review. If, time, if not, the law that says you must wait for five years, five, 30,000 cannot even stand the test of time as to talk because government has not actually taken up its own responsibility, provide facilities that will make life easy for Nigerians. Then 30,000 will do a long way. If, if, if this is what you're saying, why isn't labor playing up these other issues? This social infrastructure, this good roads, the water, you know, the electricity. And so why isn't labor uh, campaigning on uh, I mean, uh, agitating on those issues? Why are they just picking on the minimum wage? Oh, the minimum wage, like I said, was as a result of inability of government to do the needful. Mm -hmm. But as a matter of advocacy, labor has been on it. As a matter of fact, I know a se construction sector organized infrastructure summit last year, very expensive summit, inviting all the ministers involved in those sectors to tell them where we ought to be as a country, recommending way forward. You can't continue this way. Without infrastructure, 30,000 cannot still do a Nigeria worker anything. So we advocate for infrastructure that will make life easy. A, a, time, a, time, a time come whereby people know more, they don't talk about wage because the reason the average worker needs a wage is to pay for school fees, mm. is to cater for your family. So for us as a people, we believe if government can do theirs, ours is to actually monitor their functions. We are not supposed to actually drive it. They are the ones driving. Ours is to ensure that whatever we agreed is implemented. And for me, it's doable across Nigeria because we have seen that the advice on ground now is that every state should think of creating revenue beyond the ready-made all your money. And when we are done with that healing, I think uh, Nigerians uh, will we, we, we move further. Yeah, you, you say this, but then are you convinced that all states will be able to pay the minimum wage at the end of the day? As I asked before, how would you keep states accountable? It is important because if these states are saying we don't have the money, they will not pay. And that, there are some states, I think, I, I think it's uh, one of the, by ourselves, so that got, uh, one of the states in the south, south that got their own May salaries today. But the question, is, the question is, when you place your priority right, that is why when we say no state, we say they cannot pay. We are not ignorant of those that will tell you we don't have money. But we are saying when priorities are placed right, no state in Nigeria will give excuses why they can't pay salary. 
because we are aware of what they receive. We're aware of the natural resources in every state in Nigeria. So they are silent on it. It's not an excuse. It's failure. Mm. And I think Nigerians will wake up to begin to push these questions back to the drivers of the state. Why would you say you cannot pay? It's not to not speak on their behalf that they say they cannot pay. Why wouldn't they pay? Why is there no money? These are questions that they must provide answer. Otherwise, yes. what is the dividend of democracy? And, and, and I'm sure that Labour will keep pushing this, these Certainly. issues and will keep bringing them up to the government. Thank you again, Mr. Sogunov, for coming on the News of 10.